Hi guys, welcome back. It has been a while since I got my Neptune 3 Pro. It has been a walking horse for the past six months. I mainly use it to print PLA and TPU, and the print quality is very good and consistent. There is no major things I would like to put on the chicken list, but there are still a little things that might help you if you are new to this hobby. With that being said, let's get started. Chicken list number one. Micro SD card. I think my biggest complaint about this printer is a micro SD card. It is hard to take it in and out, and the slot is hidden underneath. There are a few times near me that I almost push micro SD card between the SD card slot gap. So extra precaution need to be taken whenever you are taking it in and out. If you have a Raspberry Pi to run out to print, that will be a lifesaver. Checking list number two. Booting issue. I have encountered a few times that the printer stuck on the booting window when I open the printer. There are two reasons that will cause this to happen. First one, when you insert a micro SD card when the printer is shutting down, the printer will go through the file and the SD card and try to upgrade the firmware. The second condition is happen randomly. It just stuck on the boost menu for unknown reason. The solution is very simple. Shut the printer off and remove a micro SD card. Turn the printer back on, put SD card back on. Checking list number 3, Fastener. Neptune 3 Pro comes with most part pretty simple. However, I still highly suggest you to go over all the bolts again and confirm they are fully tightened. My build plate screw comes loose after some print. Checking list number 4, Screen Cable. On the early production patch, the old foam cable style screen cable has connection issues. They have fixed those issues on the later patch, but the cable connector still seems a bit loose in my unit. I have not encountered any problem related to that yet, but I still suggest you not to remove the screen too much. Checking list number 5. Ribbon cable. The ribbon cable will somehow be hitting a gantry when homing on Y axis, which Creality Spider Extruder have the same problem. It is less likely to cause any problem, but many people have decided to put a retainer on that. Checking list number 6 Filament Runout Sensor. If you see the imagery look like this on the screen, it is something wrong with the filament runout sensor. Sometimes it's just a loosened wire. Sometimes a sensor cannot detect the filament for whichever reason, which is rare cases. Touch screen will be free. Reboot machine will normally get you back to the business. The assemble process is very simple. Most parts come with a pre-assemble. The entire assemble process should take less than 15 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, I highly recommend to go over all the bolts to confirm they are fully tightened. First, let's mirror gantry to the base. Use M5 times 45 mm bolt. Notice that the spring loader washer should be installed with the bolt. There are precaut slots on both sides of the base to help you find the correct location. Let's remove the printer to the edge of the table. Bolt holes are covered by the ribbon cable. Tight the bolts where it's just enough to hold in gantry, but not all the way yet. Place the square on the base to verify the gantry is perfect, 90 degrees to the base. We can continue tie the bolts more. Rotate out the side, repeat the same procedures. Lastly, let's lock all the bolts all the way in. Next, let's use M4 bolts to lock the screen holder on place. It, it is easier to walk on the edge of the table again. Now we can attach a filament holder on top of the gantry. Don't forget to put the filament runout sensor on as well. We can start connecting all the wires. Let's first do the filament runout sensor, X axis motor, and limit switch cable. Notice that there are three pins and four pins connectors.
nest. Move the extruder down by pulling the synchronized bell behind the top of the gantry. First, attach the ribbon cable to the metal carrier. Make sure it's locked. Continue walking downward. There are two pins and three pins connector for LED light and film runout sensor. Also, connect the Z-axis motor. Repeat on the other side. Important step: switch your power according to your region. As I am in the US, it should be 115 volt. Interesting fun. There is a 2.5 amp DC power output here. Maybe you can power something device on. Use this outlet. Don't forget to attach a ribbon cable on the access carrier. Alright, let's do some simple calibration. As mentioned earlier, there is no nut under the printer bag. We just need to adjust the eccentric nut to find the proper tension for all wheels. The wheels should not be able to move freely by finger push. It should not be too tight at the same time. Adjust the bell tensioner and make sure the printer bag is not shaking. The motion should be linear and smooth without any empty steps. Repeat similar procedures on the extruder carrier. Adjust the bell tension on X axis. The essential knot is located on the bottom. Also notice that due to the weight, the extruder assembly is carried by four wheel instead of three wheels. Lastly, adjust the eccentric knot on the z-axis on the both sides. Some degrees of up and down movement are allowed. The knot on the back last coupler no need to be tightened fully. After simple calibration done, we can start doing bed leveling. Still up, level on the touch screen. It helps all position and start heating the printer bed and the nozzle. We can see the bed mesh compensate as shown on the screen. Still up, level on the touch screen. We don't need to do anything during this process. It will take around 7 minutes to complete. You can go grab some drink for yourself while waiting. After auto bed leveling done, it will tell you the correct first layer. Nice information for beginners. Well done, Illegal. Now we can take pieces of letter paper or use this instruction paper come with the printer. Simply place the paper under nozzle and pulling it back and forth. Adjust the Z offset value on the screen at the same time as shown. It is easy to use the 0.1mm to reduce the number first. When you feel strong friction on front nozzle, use 0.01mm until you feel slightly grip force from the nozzle and you are ready to go. Now we can go ahead and use a slicer to prepare some printing file. Ladies Killer already have preset configuration for Neptune 3 Pro. But I'm more like a Prusa Slicer person. Configuration is not available on Prusa Slicer at this point. We can use a Neptune 3 profile and make modify on that. Go to the machine setting, extruder setting, 
reduce the retraction setting. Since Snapdragon 3 Pro is Directory Exuder, let's leave it at 2. We'll find out if we need to change any numbers or any settings after test print. I don't think bed leveling before every single print is necessary, so I just delete the G29 on the starting Gco. Also increase the prime nozzle line flow from 10 to 15 and 20. Thank you for watching and happy printing.